Welcome to the third video for topic 10.11 on Taylor and Maclaurin polynomials. In this video, we will be going over some Taylor and Maclaurin polynomial free response questions. You must be familiar with the general formulas for nth degree Taylor polynomials and nth degree Maclaurin polynomials. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these because these were covered in previous videos. If you are not familiar with Taylor polynomials at all, I suggest that you watch the first video on this topic before attempting these free response questions. These are the most important formulas for free response questions, and these are more for multiple choice questions. So take a look at these and pause if you need to before we move on. Let's try a free response question. A function f has derivatives of all orders for real numbers x. A portion of the graph of f is shown along with the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals zero. It is known that f double prime of zero is equal to negative one, f triple prime of zero is equal to negative one, and f quadruple prime of zero is equal to five halves. Write the third degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals zero. Whenever we're writing a Taylor polynomial, we need to know what degree it is and what our center is. In this case, our center is x equals zero, which means that we're really dealing with a Maclaurin polynomial here. Now, they also didn't specifically say let p sub n of x represent the nth degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals zero, so I'm just going to write that out briefly to be very clear with what I'm doing on my free response question. Now that I have this notation defined, what I'm going to do is write out a generic formula for any third degree Taylor polynomial for a function about x equals zero. So because we're working with a third degree Taylor polynomial, we're going to say p sub three of x, and then what is that equal to? Well, assuming that we're working with the function f, that would be equal to f of zero plus f prime of zero times x plus f double prime of zero times x squared over two factorial, and this is where the pattern starts, f triple prime of zero times x cubed over three factorial. That is my general pattern for any third degree Maclaurin polynomial. Now I need to figure out what are my values for f of zero, f prime of zero, f double prime of zero, and f triple prime of zero. So right down here, I'm going to start writing those out. I can find f of zero pretty easily by looking at my graph. This curvy line is the graph of f. So when I look and I find f of zero, that's going to be equal to two. Then I can also find f prime of zero because they gave me this tangent line to f at x equals zero. Looking at the slope of this tangent line, it looks like we are rising two units and running one unit. So two over one, that would be two. f prime of zero is also equal to two. They gave me the second and third derivatives, which is nice. f double prime of zero is equal to negative one and f triple prime of zero is equal to negative one. That means that I can just use this formula and plug in my values for all of these derivatives. So we would say p sub three of x is equal to two because two is really f of zero plus two x. Then for f double prime of zero, that's negative one. So we would say minus x squared over two factorial. And then f triple prime of zero is also negative one. So we would say minus x cubed over three factorial. Then if you want to, what you can do is simplify these factorial, but leaving it like this on a free response question is fine too. I replace the two factorial with a two because that's just two times one and the three factorial with a six because that's three times two times one. This would be my answer. A function f has derivatives of all orders at x equals zero. Let p sub n of x denote the nth degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals zero. Because they have that written in, that makes my work a little easier. I don't need to write let p sub n of x denote blah, blah, blah. Selected derivatives of f at x equals zero are given in the table. Part A says it is known that f prime of zero is equal to negative five and that p sub one of one fifth is equal to nine. Show that f of zero is equal to 10. Since we have this p sub one right here, that indicates to me that we're going to be working with a first degree Taylor polynomial for f centered at x equals zero. Now the first degree Taylor polynomial formula for really any function, that's going to be p sub n of x. And in this case, it would be p sub one of x the first degree Taylor polynomial centered at x equals zero is going to be f of zero plus f prime of zero times x. And we just stop right there because that is a first degree Taylor polynomial. Now, what I can do is I can set up some values and plug in what I know. It says it is known that f prime of zero is equal to negative five. So I'm going to say p sub one of x, keeping it as p sub one of x still, is equal to f of zero, because I'm not sure what f of zero is, but then in place of f prime of zero, I'll put negative five. So we'll say minus five x. Then I can plug in the one fifth. I can say p sub one of one fifth. And this means that now I can plug in a one fifth everywhere that I see an x. That's equal to f of zero minus five times one fifth. 
And we also know that p sub 1 of 1 fifth is equal to 9. So we'll say that this entire thing is equal to 9. Then we'll take this portion of the equation and just solve for f of 0. So we'll do f of 0 minus, and then 5 times 1 fifth is just a 1. f of 0 minus 1 is equal to 9. Add 1 to both sides, and we get that f of 0 is equal to 10. So we have shown that f of 0 is, in fact, equal to 10. Let's do part b. Part b says find p sub 4 of x, which we know means find the fourth degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 0. And then we need to use our answer to approximate f of 0 0.1. First, let's write out the general formula for a Taylor polynomial of degree 4. So if we have p sub 4 of x centered at x equals 0, that's going to be f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime of 0 times x squared over 2 factorial plus f triple prime of 0 times x cubed over 3 factorial, and then this is our last one because we're working with the fourth degree Maclaurin polynomial, plus f quadruple prime of 0 times x to the fourth over 4 factorial. So that is my general formula. Then I can start plugging in values for my different derivatives. So I'll say p sub 4 of x is equal to, and I know that f of 0 is equal to 10. So we'll say 10 plus, and then f prime of 0, well, that's negative 5. So we can say minus 5 times x, or minus 5x. Then to figure out f double prime of 0, we can use this table. This first row of the table right here, since it says selected derivatives of f at x equals 0 are given in the table, we know that the second derivative of f at x equals 0 is going to be 3. So we'll say plus 3 times x squared over 2 factorial. Then for the third derivative at x equals 0, we know that that's going to be 0, so plus 0x cubed over 3 factorial. When we simplify, that one will go away. Then the fourth derivative of f at x equals 0, that's negative 1 half. So we'll say minus 1 half times x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Then I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and I should do that in this case because I'm trying to use this polynomial to approximate f of 0 0.1, and that'll be easier if it's clean and simplified. So we'll have 10 minus 5x plus 3 halves x squared, because 2 factorial is really just 2. It's 2 times 1. This term goes away entirely because we have the 0. And then for this one, we have minus 1 half over 4 factorial. 4 factorial is 24. So this is really saying minus 1 half times 1 24th, or minus 1 48th x to the 4th. So this would be p sub 4 of x, and that was part of what it was asking me for as my final answer, so I will box that. Now, it also says use your answer to approximate f of 0 0.1. So now what I will do is I will say f of 0 0.1 is approximately p sub 4 of 0 0.1, and then I will go through and I'll plug in a 0 0.1 everywhere that I see an x up in this equation. Then I can go through and plug this into my calculator to get a decimal answer. And that winds up being 9.514. Now we can round or truncate to three decimal places. I'm going to round to three decimal places and I will say that my answer is 9.515. The way that I will write this is I will say f of 0 0.1 is approximately p sub 4 of 0 0.1, which is equal to 9.515. Now let's do part C. Let q sub n of x denote the nth degree Taylor polynomial for g about x equals 0. So p sub n of x went with f, q sub n of x goes with g. It says the derivative of the function g is given by g prime is equal to f of 3x. It is known that g of 0 is equal to negative 2. Find q sub 3 of x. Since I'm being asked to find q sub 3 of x, I'm going to write out my general pattern for any third degree Maclaurin polynomial. So we know that q sub 3 of x is going to be equal to g of 0. And notice that I'm using g instead of f here because we're working with the function g now. g of 0 plus g prime of 0 times x plus g double prime of 0 times x squared over 2 factorial plus g triple prime of 0 times x cubed over 3 factorial. So that is my general rule for a third degree Maclaurin polynomial when I'm working with g. Now, I need to find g of 0, g prime of 0, g double prime of 0, and g triple prime of 0 so that I can plug in actual numbers right there. It gave me what g of 0 is. It says g of 0 is equal to negative 2, so I'll just jot that down. Now, I'm also going to need to find those higher derivatives. So it gave me that g prime of x is equal to f of 3x, so that's probably going to be helpful. 
What I'm also going to do is I'm going to find g double prime of x and g triple prime of x because I need to be able to get formula formulas for those so that I can plug in zero and figure out what's the actual number. g double prime of x means that I'm going to be taking the derivative of f of 3x. Now, you might think that, it, that that is just f prime of 3x, but since we have 3x stuck inside here, that means that we need to use chain rule here. So this is really going to be 3 times f prime of 3x. Now, the same rule is going to apply when we take g triple prime of x. That would be 3 times 3f double prime of 3x. So 9 times f double prime of 3x. Now that I have these formulas, I can go through and I can find these at x equals 0. So for g prime of 0, that's going to be equal to f of 3 times 0, or just f of 0. And I know that f of 0, based on this, it gave me that f of 0 is equal to 10. So we'll say that is equal to 10. Then for g double prime of x, g double prime of 0 is going to be equal to 3 times f prime of 3 times 0, or just f prime of 0. f prime of 0, I know that f prime of 0 is negative 5. So we have 3 times negative 5, which is equal to negative 15. Then for g triple prime of 0, that's going to be 9 times f double prime of 3 times 0, or f double prime of 0. f double prime of 0, based on this table, is going to be 3. So we have 9 times 3, and that's equal to 27. Now that I have all of these values, I can plug them in to my, to my formula up here. So we would say q sub 3 of x is equal to g of 0 is negative 2, so we'll have negative 2, plus 10x, since g prime of 0 is 10, minus 15x squared over 2 factorial, since g double prime of 0 is negative 15, plus 27x cubed over 3 factorial, since g triple prime of 0 is equal to 27. Now, it is perfectly fine to just leave your answer like this. You do not need to evaluate the factorials. You can if you want to, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it like this. This is a valid answer for q sub 3 of x. Let y equals f of x be the particular solution to the differential equation dy dx equals y times x times the natural log of x with initial condition f of 1 equals 4. It can be shown that f double prime of 1 is equal to 4. Part A, which is the only part that we're going to be doing here, says write the second degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 1. This is different from the ones that we've been doing prior to this because we are now centered around x equals 1, not x equals 0. Use the Taylor polynomial to approximate f of 2. Here's what we're going to do. First, since we're working with a second degree Taylor polynomial centered around x equals 1, we are going to write out the general formula for a second degree Taylor polynomial centered around x equals 1. Now, since they did not specifically indicate what p sub n of x means, we're going to have to say that p sub n of x indicates the nth degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 1. Now that we have this statement written out, we can write down what p sub 2 of x, the second degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 1, would be equal to. This would be equal to f of 1 plus f prime of 1 times x minus 1 plus f double prime of 1 times x minus 1 squared over 2 factorial. And if we were to continue that pattern, we would keep changing the derivative, the power right here, and the number that we're, that we're taking the factorial of. However, we only need a second degree Taylor polynomial here. Now the values that we need to find are f of 1, f prime of 1, and f double prime of 1. They gave us f of 1. It says f of 1 is equal to 4. f prime of 1, I'm not quite sure how we're going to find that, but for now let's just write down what we do know. f double prime, it says f double prime of 1 is equal to 4. So we have these two values and we just need to find f prime of 1. Well, they didn't explicitly give us a formula for f prime of x, they did give us this differential equation f prime of 1 is going to be equal to dy dx evaluated at x equals 1. Now since there's a y and an x in our differential equation, that means that we need a variable to plug in for y and x when x equals 1. We know that the initial condition is 1 comma 4, so when x is 1, f of 1 is going to be 4. So we'll just plug in this point 1 comma 4. We'll find dy dx at 1 comma 4. Then we can figure out what this is by just plugging it into the formula y is 4, so we'll have 4 times and then 1 times the natural log of 1. The natural log of 1 is equal to 0, so that makes this entire thing equal to 0. Now we know that f prime of 1 is equal to 0. And now that we have these three values, we can write our second degree Taylor polynomial. p sub 2 of x would be equal to 4, which is f of 1, plus 0 times x minus 1. Even if it's a 0, it's good to show that process of plugging it in so that you get full points 
and then plus 4 times x minus 1 squared over 2 factorial. Then I'm just going to do a bit of cleanup here. We'll say p sub 2 of x is equal to 4, and then this is going to go away entirely. And then the 4 over 2 factorial, 2 factorial is just a 2. It's 2 times 1. 4 divided by 2 makes a 2. So we'll say 4 plus 2 times x minus 1 squared. That is our formula for p sub 2 of x, the second degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 1. Now it also asks us to use this Taylor polynomial to approximate f of 2. So we will say that f of 2 is approximately p sub 2 of 2, and then we'll plug in a 2 everywhere that we see an x in this equation. That would be equal to 4 plus 2 times 2 minus 1 squared. And this would be equal to, let's see, we would have 4 plus 2 times 1 squared. 1 squared is 1, so we're really just doing 4 plus 2 here, so that's equal to 6. So this would be my answer for part 2. I would say f of 2 is approximately 6. The graph of the function f is shown below. The area of the shaded region, which is the area between the x-axis and f for 0 being less than or equal to x being less than or equal to 2, that makes a lot of sense looking at the graph, is 1.518. The line tangent to f at x equals 0 is horizontal. So they're talking about this line right here, and that means that that line has a slope of 0. Let g be the function defined by g of x is equal to the integral from 2 to x of f of t dt. Recall from our FRQs from chapter 6 that whenever we see something like this, where we have g of x is equal to the integral from some constant to x of f of t dt, that really means that g prime of x is equal to f of x. If you're not familiar with that, there is a separate video that I have on that topic. Part A says write the second degree Taylor polynomial for g about x equals 0. First, let's write out the general formula for a Taylor polynomial. In this case, we also need to say let p sub n of x represent the nth degree Taylor polynomial for g about x equals 0. When we're writing out p sub 2 of x, that means that we're going to need to take f of 0, and sorry, in this case it should be g of 0 because we're working with the function g. So we'll have g of 0 plus g prime of 0 times x plus g double prime of 0 times x squared over 2 factorial. Now, we need to find g of 0, g prime of 0, and g double prime of 0. If we are trying to find g of 0, we can find that using this integral. So we would take g of 0 is equal to the integral from 2 to 0 of f of t dt. Now, recall that when our bounds are flipped like this, when we see the smaller number on top, we just put a negative sign on the front and flip those around. So this is equal to negative integral from 0 to 2 of f of t dt. This is where this area that they gave us is going to come in handy. We know that the integral from 0 to 2 of f of t dt is going to be equal to 1.518. Therefore, we know that g of 0 is equal to negative 1.518. Next, we need to find g prime of 0. First, let's figure out what g prime of x is. We've already established that g prime of x is going to be equal to f of x. So that means that g prime of 0 is going to be equal to f of 0. Now, f of 0, we can see very easily on the graph that f of 0 is equal to 1. Then we need to find g double prime of x. g double prime of x would be equal to f prime of x, because if we take the derivative of both of these sides, we'll have g double prime on this side and f prime on this side. We can see that the slope of the tangent line to f at x equals 0, it was given that that was horizontal, which means that we have a slope of 0 right there. So this would be equal to 0. And not necessarily always. This implies that it would always be equal to 0. If you write the equal 0 on the end there, we need to indicate that g double prime of 0 is equal to f prime of 0, which is equal to 0, because we have that horizontal tangent line. Now that we have our values for g of 0 and g prime of 0 and g double prime of 0, what we're going to do is plug it into this formula. So we'll say p sub 2 of x is equal to g of 0 is equal to negative 1.518 g prime of 0 times x, that would be 1 times x, so we'll just do plus an x, and then g double prime of 0, that's 0. But even though we have a 0 there, we still want to write that because it says write the second degree Taylor polynomial. So even though the coefficient is 0, to make sure that our answer is compliant with what they gave us, we're going to have to write it like this. This would be our second degree Taylor polynomial for g about x equals 0. Let's do part b. Use your answer from part A to approximate g of 1 8th. We know that g of 1 8th is going to be approximately p sub 2 of 1 8th. 
And whenever you're doing this, make sure that you say that it is approximately equal to. It's not exactly equal to because Taylor polynomials provide a good approximation, but they're not always exact. So to find p sub 2 of 1 8th, what we do is we just plug 1 8th into this formula right up here. Now at this point, I could ignore this last portion because I know that that is going to be equal to 0. So we'll just say negative 1.518 plus 1 8th. On a free response question without a calculator, you are not required to simplify. So your answer would simply be g of 1 8th is approximately negative 1.518 plus 1 8th.